we already have the two elements to build a quantification of operational risk. Based on the random numbers that in turn generate the frequency and severity distributions and repeating the process many times using the Monte Carlo simulation methodology, we were able to construct a quantitative assessment of operational risk. Now, how is the number generated by the Poisson frequency distribution arithmetically related to the number generated by the log normal severity distribution? A first approach to achieving this would be by multiplication. It makes a lot of intuitive sense to multiply the frequency by the severity. Think about it for a moment. If you have a number of events generated per year, the frequency, and each of them has a certain severity, then, just by multiplying one by the other, we obtain the magnitude of the risk. Yes and no. As we will see later in an example, this multiplication method would only serve to describe the average risk and not the complete shape of the risk curve. An example will demonstrate it better. I am now going to load the previous version of this same model where, graphically, what I want to teach is better demonstrated. Let us take the risk of counterfeiting here. There are 57 total events that, in the 5 year period, give us an annual average of 11.41 events per year. The mean severity is $387 and its standard deviation is $397. Cell B13 contains the Poisson distribution with which we generate, in each recalculation or F9, the random numbers, here an X is generated, and now an X, and now an X, and then an X each time we generate a new recalculation, this cell B13 contains a number that corresponds to the number of elements with a 1 in column H. The number of elements in red match is the number generated by Poisson in cell B13 and added back. This is also verified in cell H1. Also, observe what is shown in cell I1, which shows the sum of all events in a given iteration. Remember that each recalculation, each sampling, each scenario that is generated with random numbers and distributions in the specified cells is called an iteration. Obviously, cell I1, being the sum of each of the events generated in a sample way, changes its value. Now, see what happens if I generate enough iterations to have a relatively high number in frequency, a number clearly higher than the average of 11.41 and, at the same time, I am able to identify a sufficiently high number in at least one of the severities of the events generated. For example, here I have generated a scenario with X events where one of the simulated cases is significantly superior to the rest of the cases. This is the extreme event, the one that occurs in the tail of the log normal distribution with low frequency. If I had multiplied this frequency of x by the severity of this particular event with a relatively high value of $x, I would be getting a total figure of $x1000. This figure is notably higher than the same n events but where each one of them has a very different amount of severity and where some are greater than the average of $387 and some greater than that figure. However, when a notoriously high number of frequencies is multiplied, from time to time, by a relatively high magnitude of severity, it would be imposing the same severity on all n events, which, in real life situations, does not happen. Due to the existence of these extreme cases where both the frequency and the severity of the two multiplied elements are exaggerated, so to speak, it is not entirely correct to multiply frequency by severity to obtain the total magnitude of the risk. The arithmetic exercise is slightly different. First, it generates the frequency of the event individually with the Poisson, and then, at the individual level, for each of the events generated, it subsequently generates the severity individually and separately. This is convolution, instead of multiplication. With multiplication, we assume that all the severities are of the same magnitude. In convolution, we first generate the frequency and, within it, we individually generate the severities. We first generate a frequency and then we guarantee that each event generated by such frequency distribution is of different magnitude, determined by numbers independently generated for each event by the log normal severity distribution. For this reason, the computational procedure to generate convolution, that is, a compounded distribution is much slower. 
It is like generating distributions within other distributions. It is to assume natures of different magnitude for each severity of each event, which is what happens in reality. As we will see later, if we used a multiplicative model instead of the convolutive one, we will agree on the mean by both methods, but the tails of the distribution in the multiplicative model will tend to be much wider, thus tending to imply more risk than it actually exists. I hope I have clarified the concept of convolution a little better. This is more easily explained when we see the different nature of each generated event. It is as if the record of the severity of all automobile accidents covered by an insurance policy were the same amount, each time we generated them. Visually it helps to better understand when looking at the dynamic graph, not only in terms of frequency, but also in terms of severity. This is the full effect that is not captured in its entirety by simple multiplication but by convolution. Later, we will compare both methods to observe the differences. With this, we can now return to our first model to see how convolution behaves, within a single powerful DT simulator function.